The flexbore method requires a pilot. The pilot serves as a guide for the cutting head and the supply line of air to remove the cuttings from the bore path. If needed, small amounts of water or drilling fluid can be injected into the airstream. The boring operation begins. The water or drilling fluid is turned on first, about 2 gallons per minute per cutting diameter inch, depending on the groundwater content. Next, the air is introduced. In this case, about 1,600 cubic feet per minute, between 225 and 275 psi. The air carries the water or drilling fluid to the face of the cutting head. Strategic jet placement in the front of the head keeps the head clean, the cutters cool, and promotes spoil transfer into the body of the cutting tool. Air and spoil bypass is limited by the seal band directly behind the cutters. The main jet deep inside the flex tool barrel creates a vacuum which helps pull material in as it blows the cuttings through the spoil pipe. This is the path of least resistance. The air carries the spoil back to the bore pit and it blows out the side of the diverter then into a containment pit where it can be removed. It's important to monitor the outlet of the diverter as cuttings can clog and begin to back up into the spoil pipe. This is an example of a guided bore utilizing a 36-inch flex tool to perform the casing phase of the crossing. We begin with the guided pilot already installed on the line and grade of the proposed bore path. The flex bore head is attached to the pilot pipe, and the lead casing is assembled to the auger boring machine. To prepare for the job, the casing is stuffed with flanged drive pipe. A 6-inch to 12-inch ID promotes good air velocity and spoil flow. Bolt-on spring-loaded centralizers can be added to the drive pipe. They support the drive pipe and protect the casing as the cutting head is rotated. This can be beneficial when jacking reinforced concrete, fiberglass pipe, or even coated steel casing. A rigid centralizer is welded to the lead casing to keep the casing centered behind the cutting tool. Consecutive sections are added. The spoil pipe is bolted up on both ends and then the casing joint is welded. The bore continues until the cutter head reaches the exit pit. The flex tool and the weld-on centralizer are removed. The drive casing is removed and the crossing is complete.